Welcome to the Sanctuary Podcast. Angel Deer is a medicine man and offers his work on sacred land through shamanic healing, energy healing, sound healing, breath work, plant medicine, and workshops and events. The Sanctuary is a community for all those who seek healing transformation, ancient wisdom, and a place to come together to create a new way of living and relating. This is the Sanctuary Podcast, and this is Angel Deer. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome uh, to this beautiful connection. I'm always uh, very excited to uh, spend time with Amanda. <laughs> and to discuss our favorite subject, uh, the connection with plants. Thank you so much, Amanda, for uh, being here tonight and giving us this uh, space and this wisdom that you share with us. Um, so we're going to be together for around 90 minutes, 60 to 90 minutes, uh, depending on how deep uh, everyone that is present live uh, tonight wants to go. And uh, yeah, it's lovely to see your face. So thank you for, for showing up there and uh, for being present. And uh, this event is recorded. And so it also be uh, available on the podcast and YouTube channel. So I'm on that. Before we dive in, uh, why don't you introduce yourself so we get to know a little bit who you are for those of that are present tonight or listening that don't know who you are. So my name is Amanda Nicole, and the simplest term that people have given me is that I'm an herbalist. So I work with plant medicine, particularly the plants that are right here with us. But lately that title's felt a little narrow, so I made up a name for myself. So I've decided that um, I'm a Liriodendris, sort of embodying and carrying the medicine of the tulip poplar tree, which is my favorite. And I like to write and sing. I have six children. <laughs> um, yeah. And then I'm sure um, Angel will share my website, alchemillas.com, the little alchemist. And I teach and do live in the upstate of South Carolina. Wonderful. Yeah, I always think that six children must be like a full time job, right? Uh, in so many ways. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> If so you wonder, I'm listening to plants at all, actually. Yeah, I was like, when do you have time to listen to plants <laughs> at <laughs> night? <laughs> so, um, you know, the idea of tonight's uh, discussion, today's discussion was to really uh, dive into uh, how do we listen to plant? And how do we do that with authenticity, with reciprocity? And especially how do we do that when those plants are not psychoactive plants, right? It's, uh, you know, very easy to hear when we sit with ayahuasca or mushrooms or iboga or peyote. I mean, all those plants, that's what I would call the, the loud plants, right? Uh, pretty much everybody can hear them. But... I've been very interested uh, lately in the past few years to really explore this communication with plants that are maybe um, less loud and that require probably ourselves to be less loud, right? Uh, I often think that the world is so loud that the only thing we can hear if it's something is louder, right? And that started to really create some kind of reflection for me living on the land and having more quiet time and then um, I discovered Amanda, I think a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago, and saw your work. And I was like, this is exactly what I've been looking for. And we will be talking about plant dietas, which is also a traditional way to sit with plants that are non-psychoactive, plants that are, you know, around you in the forest, in your garden, uh, maybe in Central Park, if you live in New York City, right? Plants that are quite common, but that we might overlook and not really understand or not see as special, as exotic as plants from the Amazon or plants from exotic countries. 
and trying to reclaim um, our lands, our connection to our own lands that we are living on, the places that uh, we are connected to on a daily basis. So it's kind of the idea of the unfolding tonight. And we will have an experience uh, working with one plant tonight. Uh, and so you can also, uh, yeah, maybe have some some experience of that. So Amanda, uh, how did you come into this plant? Did you start with the uh, psychoactive loud plants or you never done that and you just wanted to do uh, the other plants? I don't like to make separation, but tell us a little bit of your, your path into that before we dive in. Yeah, so the way that I came into the plants was at the time I was attending Burst as a midwifery student and a lot of the births that I was attending were very intense. And um, I mean, birth is always very close to death. Both are near the veil, but a lot of births I attended were very close to the veil. And I thought, I need a break. And um, I was already interested in plants because I had been working with them for myself because my health had not. And um, so I sort of self-diagnosed, ended up with an acupuncturist, traditional Chinese herbs. And so a friend of mine told me at school, an herb that was near me, like maybe 20 minutes away. And so I thought, that's what I'm going to do. I need a break from people. I'm going to go hang out with the plants. And so I went to um, Green Comfort School of Herbal Medicine in Rappahannock, Virginia with Teresa Boardwin. And the way that she worked right there in the Shenandoah Valley in Rappahannock County, you know, the Blue Ridge Mountains. And so I began with nettles and violet and ladies mantle and oak. And I actually have never used um, what we think of as psychoactive plants, ceremonial plants. I've not done ayahuasca. I've not microdosed mushrooms. And I want to be sure to say that because I recently had a conversation with someone <laughs> Um, that had returned from a ayahuasca ceremony, their first one in Peru. And in the conversation about some of the messages that, that I've received from the plants over the years, visions, experiences, and they were just like blown away and kept repeating, you've never done ayahuasca? You don't microdose mushrooms? You haven't smoked wheat? <laughs> I was like, no, and they were like baffled. But I was glad for the opportunity to share with them that it's possible that we consider to be that way. And so I came in herbalism around what's called plant communication or plant attunement, the idea that you can communicate with the plants. And I was open to that and of that happening with nettles, stinging nettles, you know, like a, a plant, a lot of people consider a weed and pull out of their gardens. And I actually experienced that while my children were away. My partner at that time had taken them to visit their grandparents and I was outside weeding and it was just like, suddenly it started to come. And I knew it was Nettles talking and I wrote it down. I still have the paper like a decade ago that I wrote it on. And when I went to herb school the following week, I said to my teacher, Teresa, it happened, it happened. Like the plants talked to me and Nettles said this and Nettles said that. And Teresa just smiled. I love her. I love Teresa Bordewine. And she said, Amanda, I want you to go over to the shelf there in her yurt. And she said, there's a book there. And it was a children's book, actually, where people had taken um, indigenous stories of plants and made a series of children's books from them. And she said, pull down. And so I did. And it was exactly the message I had received from Nettles. And it was such a confirmation for me that I am not crazy and this is possible. And so now that's what I do with people. I create spaces actually and in person so they can sort of have that same like, oh, I just I just got a message from the plants and make that connection. And that's the path I've been on. And I do want to say before we go forward where you said these plants aren't seen as special. They're not seen as seen as exotic you know here I am over a decade now just being with the plants that are around me and I hear you say that and I think well 
they're not special yet because we don't know them. They're not exotic yet because we don't know them. It said to me um, sometimes, Amanda, I've given you a cosmology. That's the word it used. It had. And I think of the tulip poplar tree as what we think of as a world tree, you know, the world tree, like Rowan and whatnot. So, and I'm, I'm just glad I was able to like tap into it. Yeah. So, uh, I was discussing with you before we got here on the call with everyone that we, we just finished, uh, here on the land of the sanctuary, a uh, two weeks planned dieta. Uh, with tobacco and trees, local trees. And, you know, there was no um, psychoactive plants. You know, we just work with the local trees and the local plants. And uh, there was a woman that was there that uh, was showing me the notes that she received from the oak tree because she was sitting for 10 days with the oak tree. And she had this full book of almost 100 page completely filled. And she's done a lot of ayahuasca ceremony. And she said, when I do an ayahuasca ceremony, I got around 20 page at best. And here I have a hundred page from the oak tree. And she said, not only that, but I'm feeling that the hundred page are much more easily understandable and easily integrated for me, it's easier to integrate that some of sometimes those visions of master plan that are very uh, firework type, right? That are really big, but sometimes are not as easy to integrate in our life. So it's, you know, sometimes it's beautiful to see God or to communicate with star beings, but how do I bring that in my life? What, what does it bring concretely? And my experience with the oak tree that I sat last year, was things that were not only very relatable and magical, but also things that I could integrate immediately in my life. And like you just shared for the poplar tree or the nettle, sorry, I didn't read about the oak tree before. I didn't want to read about his spirit or her spirit. I didn't want to know what kind of teacher that tree is. And I wrote pages and pages it's almost a book about it. And then I went online and I researched about the oak tree and I found the Celtic lineage and the Druids that works a lot with the oak tree. And when I read those pages from the Druids, it was all the message I received during that dieta. And that really blew me away, uh, but also comforted me in the sense that, oh yeah, I'm not making that up. It's really the tree that is speaking. Yeah. So... Do you have any comments on that or any reflection on that? I'm sure you have, but... I do. Well, I love that you said this made me laugh. You know, sometimes it's fun to see God and star beings. You know, that's kind of funny. Sometimes it might be fun to see God. But I really love how you put it, that the integration. Mm. And that was what I was saying to this um, person that I was having a conversation with about how, you know, they were... They couldn't seem to understand why I wouldn't want to have this or bam, you know, and partly it's because I have, (laughs) you know, I I mean, I've had those sorts of experiences in my life. And like you said, they're hard to integrate, you know? And so what I told him was that the plants that I partner to, they're gentle, it's a mm-hmm. gentle process. It's easier to integrate, you know, um, to see God. It is a lot to see star beings, you know, brought up in the Christian church. And so I'm familiar with the Bible, the Christian scriptures and people, you know, in the Bible, they see an angel and they fall on their as if dead. And the angel will say to them, you can get up. Don't be afraid. You know, I mean, that's kind of. <laughs> you know, ayahuasca experience, you know, and these others. And so I really love it because I've never been afraid with the plants. I've never felt overwhelmed with the plants that are around us. It has been easier to integrate. I have seen people like this come away from some of these ceremonies. And, um, you know, I'm not saying it's always like this. And there's a lot of but he's pretty shaken up and it looks like he's going to need some time to sort of remember, you know, but when we sit in circle with tulip poplar or with rose or daisy, 
Nobody walks away that way. And yet what I find so extraordinary is that the messages and the teachings and the medicine is found that has been said recently is how do you know that and sit with ayahuasca and i know you and i were talking about how you know when we first began to communicate a couple years ago you had these experiences you know in your ceremonial um medicine dietas and i had things and we, you know, we said to each other, it's because the truths are universal. Mm. So I also feel like they, they're easier to integrate, less profound. You know, I have, how to word this, but, you know, met God, <laughs> explored the idea, the presence of starving, you know, with these plants. And, I, and then I'll pause and see where you want to take it. As you were saying, you know, that it's, um, it can be a lot to integrate, even though it's amazing to see these things. Part of what I found the plants allow me to experience the ones that are around me, they're just, hmm, it's like I see me, like they start with me. <laughs> I don't know how to explain that, but like, they start with me and I move out like God in me connection is me. and somehow it's maybe easier, but somehow for me, it's easier because I know me, <laughs> you know, I'm here, I'm here in this human body. So yeah, I think there's a lot to be said for the gentleness, which we talked about in our last conversation, dear medicine, why not the gentleness, to mm. the realness because we I don't think we're made to have explosive experiences frequently. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, not yet anyway. Yeah, and God is like define frequent. So <laughs> but yeah, I, I want to touch on that subject of uh gentleness that you're mentioning here. Um you know, I feel a lot of the ways of healing, especially these kind of traditional ways, but that made their way into the Western world that have been kind of colonized in so many aspects of it because we don't have referential of tribe living or forest living or even cultural or language referential. Um, and we are coming with bodies that are pretty traumatized you know bodies that are excessively stimulated by the news by the trauma of the world by climate change by politics by the violence i mean there's so many things that our bodies are already you know have to integrate have to process and somehow we want an experience that's strong enough to kind of disrupt that kick that out purge that but the violence we are receiving through all those means and society and the system we are living in, we in fact doing it to ourselves sometimes a little bit, right? You know, in the way we are healing, right? We feel like unless it's really hard and unless I beat myself down and, you know, I've done that for 15 good years with my healing work, you know, going to very hard retreats and things like that. And unless I do that, nothing is going to happen. And then I started to realize this is a colonial ID and maybe even a religious ID, right? Suffering, right? You are impure and you, I'm preaching to the choir right now. You need to hear, right? You're, you're not pure and you're imperfect. And there's this very violent ID that somehow we are not whole, that somehow there's something wrong with us. And somehow we don't have the power, right? It, and we need to take something very powerful to somehow give us that power and there's nothing far from the truth than that more far from the truth than that right it's it's really uh violent i believe you know in many ways and sometimes it's necessary you know that some of those plants are like we need to really kick out of some patterns and they have their place but i feel that sometimes you see people that are doing this you know 
every week or every month or like a lot until somehow something happened on bodies that are exhausted on emotions that are overwhelmed, on mind that are going crazy, right? And on spirit that is so drained and it doesn't really serve. So it's very much a problem of relationship with ourselves, right? And so we have a broken relationship with ourselves and the world that is violent. We are talking to ourselves in violent way. We are treating our bodies in violent ways. And somehow we are going to healing ways that can be a little bit violent. And we don't believe, and that's what I would like to end that topic about and have your view on it. It's a very masculine way, right? We don't believe in that softening, that feminine embrace, that surrendering, that gentleness, the dancing, the singing, the softness, the tears, right? And somehow that this gentle touch can heal us. We believe, right? We need the sword. We need the kick in the butt or in the face, however you look at it. So yeah, yeah, I feel there is a lot of patriarchy in it. There's a lot of colonial aspect in it. And the way people sometimes look for those healing methods, you know, at first can, can reproduce and repeat potentially violence, which we don't have with the plants we are talking about tonight. I love what you said, speaking, and, and when you brought up suffering, said the words, it was in my mind, I was right there with you, you know, that um, we have this idea in our culture that if you're going to get anything worth getting, if you're going to experience anything, you're going to have to suffer, or it's going to have to be hard, you know, and I'll just, I'm done with that, done, <laughs> and part of what the, <laughs> you know, brought to me is gentleness and tenderness. And, you know, in my own, what my own soul and body has had to mend, the tenderness and gentleness have been healing in so many ways and not just be or this situation or this event. And they've taught me that you know I the world in a song I can be receptive I don't have to push I don't have to be yanked around I don't have to be punished or whatever you know to to receive what I need to receive and know what I need to know and make the shifts I need to make you know I don't I I have vomited a good bit on this journey because our bodies do respond to you know what's happening but um but I don't have to, I can go sit with the rose and I can enjoy the fragrance and I can enjoy the sun and I can enjoy the, I can enjoy the stillness and there can be like a gentle work happening inside of me. So I love that you, that you touch, you'll shift that is happening moment you know for it to happen and I was thinking about how um when patients with someone about uh ayahuasca again particularly they were listening um on the podcast it caught their attention because it was Michael Pollan which a lot of people are familiar with and his book and so they were curious about what was being said about peyote and ayahuasca and that that's what grabbed their attention and this person has known me <laughs> two decades and they could they could have cared less up to this point what is happening to me with the plants but it grabbed their attention with this peyote and this ayahuasca and these experiences because you know there's it, like like there's power there like there's a punch there you know and there is there's medicine there and like you said there's a time for it but I feel like in our culture like you're it's a imbalance with the masculine and the feminine, that we don't value the quiet. We don't value the slow. We don't value the process. And it's hmm. interesting when you say we need some enough to go over what's happening. It reminded me of another Bible story, because <laughs> that's my upbringing, <laughs> where I believe it's Elijah is in a cave and he wants to meet with God, the prophet Elijah. And it says like the storm comes and the fire comes and the tornadoes come and so all this comes. And then when all this passes, there's a still, and he hears the voice of God. 
And so I thought to myself, we tend to want to go over and get louder instead of thinking, why don't I go under and get softer, you know, and see what can happen down here. So I really love that you brought attention to the experience that we're having with some of these imbalances in our culture. Yeah, and I feel also, which is another uh, colonial way of seeing things, we see things as vertical and pyramidal, right? So we place the master plants kind of at the top of the pyramids. Uh, we place the, this one is uh, the master of the master, and this one are the loud ones. And then we plant the other one under, like we placed ourselves on top. And then we place, you know, the animals under and the plants under, and you know, it's it's like this pyramid, you know, uh, of power. But in the more, in any native traditions, in any ancient ways, we sit in circles, right? Nobody is above. And for me, that's how I see those plants, right? They are sitting in the circle with me. And some might be, you know, in a circle, there is loud people and there's people that are less loud. Uh, but the wisdom doesn't always come from the loudest people in the circle, right? It's pretty evident if you sit in a circle before. And in fact, sometimes some of the very small voices carry immense wisdom, but we need to give them space, right? We need to give them attention. We need to kind of ask the loud voices inside of us and in the circle to kind of tame down so we can hear it. So I want to kind of transition into how do we do that? Because we are in the world that we are in, right? With the violence and the loudness and the busy life, right? With our jobs and all our kids and you know all the things that makes takes a lot of space. So how do we enter this before we experience it you know what are the steps and the ways that we can create this uh this container uh for listening for deep listening yeah so this came up recently in conversation as well and it's really just and getting quiet which is what is so hard for so many of us you know because like you said it's, it's busy, it's loud everywhere we go. So that's it. I mean, I honestly feel like that's it. You know, open heart because the plants are always speaking. Nature is always talking. It's, it's literally just like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's not even on the other side of the veil. Like it's literally right here all the time. We just have to like brush away what's over our ears or over our hearts. So one of the ways that I try to encourage people to connect with the plants in this way is just be intentional about it and slowing down, maybe even take time to sit with the plant, just sit and just be part to the possibility of it. That's what happened to me I, when I heard nettles is I had just opened my heart to the possibility of it. And then when I was outside that day with nettles, I was weeding the garden and so we get into kind of like a rhythm state, you know, my mind down. And then I was able to hear, to hear it, to receive it. And I've had some people say to me, you know, it's easy for them to connect with animals, animal spirits, and but not plant spirits. And I've told them it's a different frequency, vibration. It's a little more subtle. And so I've also found that besides just getting quiet, being intentional, um, opening up to the possibility of it, sometimes there needs to be a patience. Some don't get a big download the first time, but also a trust that we've heard what we've heard, we've seen what we've seen, we've experienced what we've experienced, like our stomach growling. Or the fact that a hawk flies overhead, starting to notice subtle things about what we experience, a memory we have, a person that comes to mind, maybe we feel like we want to start to cry, just trusting that. And then in time, you'll be able to sort of 
move past some of those like surface subtle ways of the communication to pages, mm. phrases and answers. But I think that's some of the simplest ways to begin is intention, um, sitting, being still, being open to the possibility, patience, just being observant, trusting what you see. Um, and I, I do think it's good because you mentioned this with our um, dominantly imbalanced masculine way of being to not approach the plants with what can you do for me? Now, if you approach and say, what can you do for me? They will probably tell you because they're very generous and kind and they get that we're humans and we don't always remember our manners. <laughs> but sometimes it's better just to sit and say like, who are you to share with me? You can introduce yourself. Um, but I would also say like for me, that day with nettles was an accident. Hmm. I had just gotten into the place and they knew the desire of my heart and we matched. And then I've had people start. So I feel like there's really a magic to opening to the possibility and almost like humbling ourselves as humans and believing that, you know, maybe this little um, chicory flower has something to so I don't know if that's what you're looking for, but those are some things that come to mind. Yeah, I mean, you know, a thing that I that has been coming for me lately and I've been thinking about is that because of those colonial ways and this kind of Western ways of approaching nature, we kind of go in, in it, even if we just go for a walk in the forest to get something, right? We only go to get. We don't really go to meet. Like to, you know, if if every time I want to see my friend, it, I only call them when I need something, <laughs> uh, that's going to be very imbalanced, right? But we do that a lot, right? And even people that are very connected to nature, right? If you look at how balanced it is, you know, that's been kind of my work in the last few months because I'm writing a book and I really want to get into that aspect of reciprocity. How reciprocal is my relationship to nature? How much do I give and how much do I receive or how much do I take? And I feel that we go, we might go also about plant dieta or connecting to plants, right? You might be thinking like listening to this and say, okay, I'm going to want to connect to nettle or to tulip poplar or to oak tree, but we're already going to get something, right? I, I want to get a message. We're not really going to get to go to, okay, I want to just know that being that I don't know, right? I pass by every day. There's not only in my garden or there's that tree in my garden. Have I sat there, not for me, but for them? Am I gone there, not just when I'm sick or overwhelmed or tired or have anxiety, but I'm, when I'm feeling really good and I'm just going to say thank you, by the way, for last time I sat with you when I was overwhelmed and I felt better. You know, this aspect of saying thank you also is not always very present. And the second aspect is what you were touching on, which is we go with an idea of what the message would look like, should look like, right? And if I don't hear a voice or don't see a color, or those, don't see some kind of shadow walking behind, maybe, you know, whatever it is that we expect to see, we might miss on something that's happening in our environment around or in our own bodies, because we might not recognize that maybe, oh, that memory that's coming back to me, we think we're distracted, but maybe it's the plant that's bringing that memory, right? Yeah, I love this because it reminds me of an experience that I had that I think might help all of us with what you're saying. You know, it's about relationship, like you and I mentioned before we started. Um, we don't go up to humans and say, what can you give me? How can I use you? Or some people do. <laughs> so, you know, but but what the best way to um, to approach another being is I want to see you. I want to know you. 
I want to connect with you. I want and I prayed this prayer <laughs> quite a few years ago. And you know how it is like sometimes we pray things and we don't really know what we're praying. <laughs> and then we get the answer, right? <laughs> but I prayed that I wanted to see the world as it was. I wanted to see it possible. And now at the time I was thinking, whatever's possible, you know, do play. Like what? What is the world? I want to know it. I want to see it. Well, as you might imagine, there were some parts that were revealed that weren't what I had in mind when I prayed that prayer, you know. <laughs> but but part of what happened with that prayer is I got, I did, I received the desire in my heart because what I had prayed was, and I'm, I want to see it. I want to know it. I want to experience, connect with it. Like, like, if there's, if there is all this life around me, if there's all this magic around me, if there are all these beings around me, you know, if there's all these ways to connect, I, I want to connect, you know? And so that's why I feel like sometimes it can happen by accident and you can't really make a mistake because the plants are incredibly gracious. They're not humans. <laughs> <laughs> Go out and you still, you're like, oh, I'm not completely I haven't completely eradicated my need for a message. Well, I haven't either, <laughs> you know, and they are embodiments of the divine. And we, as are we, we just tend to be a little more confused about our expression. Um, but this is what I find. So if you are able to cultivate in your heart a desire to connect, a, de a desire to see and to know and to experience, just like you would someone that you truly loved, a lover, not a lover. I want to know you, like, tell me who you are. And then you open up your heart. They already know it, but you know, and then the exchange begins. And uh, so that mm. is this idea of relationship. And that's where the slowness process comes in because you might go and be with the plant tomorrow and it may give you, you know, a tome that you write this can happen but you may find like with me and some of my dearest plant companions that you spend years and your relationship goes deeper and deeper and deeper and you know each other more and more and more to the point where as weird as it might sound now I feel like Tulip Poplar and I just merge <laughs> you know and then I really love what you said about this expectation so we're humans, we kind of have trouble letting go of expectation, but you may see something, you may hear something, you may feel something, you may know something, who who knows? Just be open to almost infinite possibilities of what can happen here. Mm. And just be open to the experience. And in time, if you don't receive, um, what you think are clear visual or seeing or feelings will it's like you're learning a language yeah i love i love the idea of patience because it also goes against right the systems which are about immediate and instant gratification right we want things immediately and if it doesn't happen, we think there's something wrong, right, with us. Like somehow, you know, I'm not worthy. I mean, we make it a story very quickly with our inner critic. Um, I want to share a little story with Nettle about that. Um, Nettle was my first plant that I connected to uh, years ago uh, outside of Master Plant. And uh, someone told me I should drink nettle and it was, you know, I was really tired and I say, you should drink some nettle tea. So I ordered some nettle leaves and, you know, from a good place and started drinking the teas. And one day I just had this experience, just, you know, feeling the nettle spirit mm -hmm. and seeing like this little man's or little people with armors and swords. And I was like, oh, that's why you were stingy <laughs> because they were all covered with the spiky armors. And it was like, yeah, I'm, I'm a protector, you know, I, I defend, right? And I'm going to protect your body, right? I'm going to bring that strength to your body. But I could also see the spirit, which was a warrior. And I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. But then I realized that I don't have any nettle on my land, which is crazy. I have six acres and I looked everywhere and couldn't find any nettles. 
And I really wanted to connect to Nettle. I was like, you know what? I'm going to order Nettle live online, which is weird because I could not find it anywhere. But anyway, I got those two little Nettle plants and I found a place in the forest where I could plant them. And I planted them and they kind of struggled there, never already grew. But the year after, so this year, like or last year and this year, Nettle started to grow everywhere in my garden. When I say everywhere, there's big patches, literally the path that goes down to my temple as one side covered with nettle. It doesn't come from this two little guy that I planted because it didn't even flower. And definitely it's just the biggest patch ever. And now I've seen them on both sides of the path, the entrance of this path that goes to the temple. And they are like those guardians on both sides. And I'm just mesmerized by it because I've been teaching that, but I never had the full experience of it. That when we just call the plants, they somehow appear. Yeah. Or when we need them, they appear. We don't really need to do much more than calling. Yeah. And so did you have any experience like that? Like kind of paying, and I want, because we're going to transition into starting working with a plant now, but how do we pay attention to what's growing in our garden and what we feel called to as the plants that is already trying to get to us, to communicate to us? Yeah. Um, yes, I've had lots of those experiences and so have clients and students where um, you begin to see a plant everywhere or suddenly it springs up in your yard and have a session. And that's the plan I tell them. I can't tell you how many times people will come for a session and at the end of it, I'll say, you know, Mullen is coming through so strongly for these reasons. And they'll start to laugh and say, there's one that just started growing right outside my door, you know? So this is normal. And I really you would, um, one of my first teachers and just in some ways, my primary teacher, you know, he wasn't my first chronologically, but he's like my lineage, you know, with it, is he told me that, uh, or in, even in the books he wrote, that the plants that you need, they will come to you. So I have to tell you my own little story real fast before we listen. When I mentioned earlier that I wasn't well, I wasn't well all those years ago. I had um, seven consecutive miscarriages, extremely mm -hmm. low blood pressure, like easy bruising, um, just so many things. Like I was not well. And the doctors were saying, it's a phase. Your blood work is fine. And I thought, who who goes through phases where you have seven consecutive miscarriages after three healthy births? I was young. Like, I shouldn't be bleeding the way I'm bleeding or passing out the way I'm. I mean, it was not okay, you know? So that, um, you know, self-diagnosed, found the acupuncturist, traditional Chinese medicine. She was beautiful. The first session with her, I talked for two straight hours telling her everything I could think to tell her about what I was experiencing, you know, because someone was listening. And I remember she was like writing up the page, writing up the side of the page, listening to me. And when I finished, she said, uh, someone should have been taking care of you. That was her first line, which was healing in and of itself. And then she said, I know what's wrong and I can help you. And so we started on the way. And I remember being in her office and um, she was very discouraged and she said I'm so confused like I know what's happening and we've it's been moving along and now there's this roadblock and I've tried this and I've tried that and I, I don't understand why we're not making this shift you know for you so up to that point a plant had been showing up everywhere like uh engraved on boxes like on pictures, paintings at like flea markets, on people's t-shirts, like random places, you know, just constantly. It was grabbing my attention. I didn't know the name of the plant, but I was like, this plant is everywhere. And I remember Matthew Wood saying, they'll come to you. So she's sitting there and, you know, she works primarily with traditional Chinese plants. And she mumbled to herself, mumbled, maybe she needs milk thistle, but she didn't say it to me. And I said, what did you say? And she said, I don't know, you know, maybe milk thistle. And she just went off, she blew it off. So I get in my car, I Google, you know, milk thistle, the picture comes up, it's the plant. I didn't read another thing. I didn't read anything. 
I just went and got myself a milk thistle tincture. I think it was like a Whole Foods or something that was nearby. And like dominoes, it started to move forward and I made the shift, you know? And so since then, I always pay attention, you know, to the plants that are around me. Um, and I even will tell clients and students, you know, look in the yard. And like I said, I've had experiences where people say, when I mention a plant, it's already out there. So even if we're not name of nettles or the name of rose, so sometimes we are, I've had that experience. Like I want to meet a lady slipper. I want to find a reishi, you know, I want to be with an elm and then suddenly bam, you know, next time you're out, there it is. But also we call to them with our hearts, even when we don't know it, they see us, they feel our air see our vibration they know what we need they're here for us they show up we just don't notice them yet and we don't know the language so just I also want to encourage people like if you say it put it out there because they're coming <laughs> you're gonna see it but also know that if you don't know who you'd like to meet if you don't know you know what experience your soul desires <laughs> you know, your soul does, it's talking, they will hear you, they will come. So it's another way of being intentional and paying attention when you're out to see who's around you. And then if you see oak everywhere, if you start to see blackberry everywhere, go look it up. You'll know mm -hmm. what can happen. I've had plants come to me so many times that I didn't even know their name and I'd suddenly see an image of them in my mind. And then Yeah, and it's... Uh... Yeah, and it's so hard, you know, one of the things we have to reclaim is our intuition, right? It's through to, to the knowing when we hear something to trust it, right? And to go for it. And with plants, we need to be, you know, a little careful with not all the plants are edible and we need to maybe check, you know, make sure we identify properly. But beyond that, it's really trusting this intuition. You know, years ago, and I finished by that example, and maybe we'll jump into working with all the people that are connected now with, with the plants. But years ago, I was, uh, I felt really connected to Moulin. And, you know, that plant is, you know, biannual and it's kind of this short plant on year one and on year two, it makes that very long stick with beautiful inflorescence of flowers. And there is kind of leaves at all level. And I didn't really know very well the plant. I never worked with it. I didn't know what it was for. And I got this message one day, I was just walking where I saw instead of the meaning, I saw a spine, like literally like someone's spine. And I heard, and I can't tell you, it was not like your voice now. I just felt or heard to basically collect the lower leaves, the medium leaves and the higher leaves and to make three tinctures. And for people with lower back pain to use the lower leaf tincture, the middle leaf tincture for middle back pain and the upper leaf tincture for upper back pain. And obviously, if you go in the literature about Moulin, you know, I never looked about it. It's like, is this for back pain? It doesn't really matter. But what's striking to me is that you will just see, oh, yeah, the leaves are for this. But here, the plants was very specific. Say, yeah, use the base of me because that's where I got my strengths and that's the base I can help people, the base of the spine. And she was slicing it for me and really trusting, you know, and I made three tinctures, you know, and that's the spirit of the plant, right? It's not just the chemical composition because maybe if you analyze, it's the same three leaves, right? Uh, but maybe there's some slight difference that can make them available for that. And if I go online and just, or just buy a book and look for my ailments, you know, I might not find a plant that really want to connect with me yes. and want to carry a medicine through me with something very specific. And so I feel like, and Matthew is really good at that, like trust what you're hearing, which might be very different from what you might be reading about it, about that plant or what someone else might tell you what this plant is for. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you a thousand percent. <laughs> All people, you know, I appreciate my teachers. I love my books, although I hardly look at them at all anymore, but I love books. Um, but I'm at a place now where I would say 85, 90% of what comes out of my mouth <laughs> about the plants is what I've gathered. And I tell people like who want to 
be an herbalist or work with plant medicine or mm -hmm. this or that or the other like <sighs> herbal schools just blow past this but I'm like this is like the key <laughs> to offering plants to people in a more effective way for their souls their bodies and their spirits because what you just offered that subtlety that specificity that nuance you know that you really are going to receive from being with the plants like you said most of this isn't in books and i'll probably not because people haven't received it although some of them haven't but even at this time with so many shifts in our culture you're not considered legit if you put yeah. that in the book yeah. yeah and and when you say like we're gonna learn to like trust our intuition i'll just share with you that um jim mcdonald who's an herbalist that i enjoy he received a similar thing from Mullen and he shares it in his classes that depending on where the injury is on the spine to take a leaf from that place. And I just want to, yeah. And I want to share that with you. I hope it doesn't diminish I hope it encourages because this is part of learn to trust our intuition. Now you trust it because you, you've got this practice. You, but sometimes we're not there. And so when we do what we're getting ready to do and sit together, or when I do my one-on-one -on -one sessions with people or classes, when we hear these other people say these similar things, it helps to encourage us to trust ourselves and trust what we hear. And also to realize that the plant is the plant. Mullen is Mullen. They have their messages. They have their personality. So it's beautiful to me. And every time I hear a story like what you just shared, and I need to hear these stories still all these years later, it just confirms for me yet again, I'm not crazy. <laughs> Keep listening. Oh, you are good crazy, right? Yeah, good crazy. <laughs> and you know, Tulip Poplar for me has been like such a lesson in that because there's not that much out there about it. Mm. at all and so I just keep gathering and I believe what it says I believe what I hear and I believe myself and then happen with clients and again and again and again the pattern in the words the pattern in the words and people get it so it's magic in like the best way so I just love that you shared that story it's perfect for moving into listening I think to for the trusting yeah okay so let's do that I uh, hope everyone is ready to have an experience of it. So which plants are we going to do an experience with right now? <laughs> well, I think it's probably going to have to be Tulip Poplar because it's come up so much in the conversation. And I'm pretty sure that's what you wanted. <laughs> I've been praying so hard for it. So I'm so glad it's it. <laughs> I, so that's what we're going to do. And so before we do it, um, I do want to just share real quick that I'm going to sing, if that's okay, because I just we I just want to help us kind of shift you know, into a different space. But also I want to encourage everyone that's here and some of you I recognize. So, you know, jump in, encourage the others, you know. When we sit with the plant, we're going to bring up a picture which should even make this more amazing. You don't even have to have the plant physically. So we're going to pull up the picture and then we're going to sit for a few moments and just see what you notice. What do you feel in your body? Um, you may see something, you may see a little vision, you may hear or feel words, a song may come, a memory, a person, a smell, a fire truck may drive past your window. You know, it doesn't matter just observe observe what you receive observe what you feel and um and then after we do that for a few moments we'll open the floor for those that want to share share um it's really beautiful sometimes and what i'll do is if it's okay with everyone is as i as i listen as you share i'll reflect back because that's part of like why i'm in the world <laughs> <laughs> if it's okay is when you say I heard and saw this I'm like perfect and amazing because tulip poplar is this and that and that you're right keep going you know although occasionally I'll say I have no idea what to do with that but it's beautiful I love you and as your path unfolds 
email. (laughs) (laughs) And just know there's no, there's absolutely no wrong answer. And nothing is too small. Nothing is too silly. Nothing is too trivial. I've had people talk to me about peppermint patties when they've been with plants. And I've had people talk about dragons, whatever, you know, just, (laughs) you know, so we just share. And what we'll see is that this is what I've had the experience with the plants is that there will be usually a theme because the plant knows we're all here together. And so it will Mm -hmm. talk to all of us together and we'll sort of leave it. So, um, that'll kind of be the process. Is there anything else that you think we should No, it's good. So I'm going to put the image on the screen, right? Sharing for, um, for everybody, you're going to sing a song and then we are going to have like two, three minutes of silence, just observing and feeling the recommend people close their eyes and feel into it, or just look at the plant or how do we do that here? Uh, They can, so we'll pull it up and then you can look at it. You can just close your eyes and feel it, whatever you want. So how about if I sing? And then when I finish the song, you just pull up the picture and we'll just go into that space. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. I sit and listen to the trees, the messages they fall like leaves into my heart, into my soul. Tree talk is how I walk home. I sit and listen to the trees, the messages they fall like leaves into my heart, into my soul. Tree talk is how I walk home. You're listening to the Sanctuary Podcast with Angel Deer. While you're listening, browse the website at www.thesanctuaryheal.com. Okay. So, <laughs> who would like to go first? Um, I'm okay if you want to type into the chat anything you observed, anything at all. Like, you can be like, my wife just yelled at me to take out the trash. <laughs> or you can, if you choose, um, unmute yourself and say, hey, me, and then we'll we'll start sharing medicine. Yeah, so at the bottom of the screen, you have a little uh, icon that says reactions, and you can please raise your hand. And if you click raise your hand, I can unmute you. Uh, So if you wish to speak. And you will have to have your video on, I believe, for me to see that. I'm not sure, but... uh, So Tati say I got a smell, which was like sweet, rich cinnamon, kind of spicy. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. I'll just comment. Um, if you, I don't know if you've ever uh, enjoyed the fragrance of tulip poplar, <laughs> but the the inner bark is so sweet. It's like a melon. I mean, you just want to like stick your nose on it and just. <laughs> So the sweet smell she received, and then it's curious to me, this rich cinnamon kind of spicy, is that lately Tulip Poplar has been talking to me about its fire medicine, the cup even like a cauldron, and it's been speaking to me of tending the fire. Let's see, Stacy says, I saw the flower in my lower abdomen and womb and root, and then the throat area with light shining through boldly. (laughs) Beautiful. So interestingly for the physical body, tulip poplar is for the womb. It is a uterine tonic for the womb, the inner bark uh, for the root. And also that throat area with the light shining through, guys, there is magic in this tree for the voice, especially for singing and especially for when she says the light shining through boldly. Like, I don't know how you guys feel about these words. We just have the words we have, but our ability to be conduits and channels for the divine voice. Yeah. Just letting the light 
I mean, I don't want to, I'm not using light language in a light way. I'm being for real, like divine light language, like flowing through us. And I've even seen it before with like canary medicine and canaries in my throat and gold coins and just, who I love it. And oh, someone right under says, I got the same. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? It was like someone was hugging my lower belly. I will also offer, not to say this is your experience, but it is a beautiful plant for, but especially I've experienced it with sexual trauma um, and really giving some love to the root and to the womb. Again, I feel like a calmness in the inner part or womb, <laughs> abundance of sunlight surrounding with subtle protection. It's so beautiful. I have a song I'm going to sing at the end. That this plant's obvious connection to light, to the solar aspects, and then it's protection. Um, I've had this tree like wrap its branches around me in my mind and like hide me away from people that are not good, not safe for me. I felt the sun, Jessica says, Leo energy, a cocoon, womb, protection, feminine energy, the maiden archetype, gentleness, regeneration, a sailboat. <laughs> I got the sense that it was about water surfacing emotion, gentleness. So again, so lovely. And we've got the theme here that was already mentioned with sunlight, with the sun and Leo energy. It has lion medicine, regal medicine, and, and not just lion like powerful, but the peaceful calm of a lion really that is part of their medicine um the feminine energy is beautiful it has dove medicine uh very much the divine feminine it actually has spoken to me of like my mom isn't around she left and i miss having a mother and it comes to me and tells me that i am the divine mother and i am even my own mother it helps me mother my children um it has the fox the maiden archetype gentleness let's be sure to make this clear this has already come up with some of the calmness the gentleness this is a tree with deer medicine that is about tenderness and gentleness how to be tender with yourself gentle with yourself tender with others gentle with others with your word with your energy with your touch regeneration it's a tree of resurrection <laughs> of a return to eden i have some videos about that on my ig page and it is connected to water. Um, most definitely has blue hair in medicine. She who um, she who stands alone, but also she who stands in water. Like you can continue to stand straight and tall when there's like rushing emotions. You you can stand erect with it. Um, and with those surfacing emotions, there's even the calmness, the peacefulness. I love it so much. She said, "I love you." <laughs> Just drink that in, in that sweet. Receive my nectar deeply. That was what Sophie received. And she also was very in the womb, the lower belly and the root. I have to tell you this part. I love you. Just drink that in. Receive my nectar deeply. The first time Tulip Poplar spoke to me, but I didn't realize it was speaking. I got impenetrable fortress which isn't that. And all the women in this group, like 25 women were like, oh no, that's the wrong answer. Tulip Poplar loves everybody. Tulip Poplar loves everybody. It's like this. this, this, this. I mean, I didn't think they were lying. That just wasn't what I got. And Matthew Wood was there and he like, he's gentle, but he hushed everybody and was like, it's teaching Amanda something else. That's enough. And he was so right. I'm so glad he said that. But this message of love, like, they wave at you. Their leaves, they're like, hi, humans. I love you. Keep up the good work. I see you. And you feel the divine love in the tulip poplar and that drink that in. Their cups are like, or their flowers are like a cup, you know, like literally just tip it, you know, like drinking the nectar, the sweetness of the divine, the sweetness of yourself. Mike says he's still tingling. 10 minutes ago, he grabbed two jars of cinnamon. <laughs> Before that, he got the honey jar to add some to his nail tea. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's getting a real dose of plant medicine tonight. And I want to I want to really say something important here. It feels pressing tonight. 
this image of the cinnamon, the warmth, the fire, combined with these images of honey and sweetness, these fragrances, this is something that I think is so important for us to hold that Tulip Poplar teaches. Like, there can be the sweetness and the fire. <laughs> there can be both in one bean. And also, Tulip Poplar, so far for me, now you may get something different as you go on your journey with Tulip Poplar, but so far for me, um, the fire for it isn't destructive. It's passion, but it's also warmth. Tend the fire, tend the cauldron, you know, the warmth that's there, you know, like it's very, um, it has dragon medicine, but it's not a dragon that like destroys with its fire. It's warming, life-giving. Um, so I just, I would think that's important, you know, for us to say, Catherine says, tall, straight, yet soft and feminine, holding light for the heart ancient wisdom from the heart Ooh, like of creation times very good so it is tall and straight of course she doesn't you know maybe she knows the plant I don't know you can't get that from the flower but it's very tall and straight and it's taught me to do the same to stand straight to stand tall and yet you know in that courage that it gives to the heart so I'm still can be soft you know, feminine, holding light for the heart. So we think of the heart as pink and green and red, but Tulip Poplar wants to show a golden heart, the light for the heart, like the divine light shining through our hearts. And this part, ancient wisdom from the heart of creation times. So one of my phrases for this tree is that it's an origin tree. It talks to us about our origins, where we came from, uh, and not just our parents, even back before that. And it also talks to us about our ability to create our own worlds and new earths. And it even talks to us about, we talk about star beings, the fact that some of us may have already created worlds and other realms, dimensions. It's very fun, play with it. But this idea of creation and return to Eden. So Gretchen says, I have no relationship with this tree, but I've raised trees for 40 years and felt strongly of the relationship between all trees and myself. Now, Mullen, that's a different story. So she has some Mullen <laughs> stories to tell. Maybe we'll get together sometime and do Mullen. Elizabeth says, I do not see the raised hand option. So nice to see you in a minute. She says, I felt the opening in the base of my occiput here. Yes. And I heard Atlas open the Atlas. Oh, my God expand backwards and extend your vision to the periphery oh I love this because my dog there's a dog here I love this because the atlas opened the atlas I don't know what it's going to mean for you but one of the first messages this tree gave me was um like that it would direct me it would give me direction almost like following the stars like a compass and for years I was like I think I'm lost I'm not sure this is working <laughs> And then recently through the work, artwork of a woman, um, oh gosh, Autumn, Autumn Sky. Oh, I, I'll have to uh, share that with um, Angel and maybe he can send it out. She did a piece of artwork with a golden heart with the compass, the star, the compass star around it. And this idea of following the heart as the compass. And I was like, oh my goodness, that saying to me all these years learning like we said to trust the heart to trust the intuition as our atlas our compass although elizabeth you're gonna have to tell me what else you get i love it so much this part where you say extend your vision to the periphery like go backwards one of my students once saw a bear climb to the top of tulip poplar and tell her to come up with it so she came up with it and tulip poplar showed her to look far out to the edges it's so beautiful um, Lance says, I was surprised to notice the vein patterns on the leaf and saw it as a topographic map. We have the map again, oh, showing farm boundaries or suburban lots, irregular patches bisected by the very straight and angular lines of the main veins with the flower appearing like a sun. Never saw that before and don't know what to make of it. <laughs> 
I love it because for myself, I can't tell my whole story here, but this theme of that's starting to come at the end of this map, this atlas, um, I don't know what I'd do without this tree. Like it is a counselor and a guide for me. I sit with this tree and I listen to literally say like, what should I do? And and I'd, I, in the past I've said tulip poplar told me to X. But what I've realized is tulip poplar just keeps turning me back to my heart, telling me your heart is good, your heart is pure, your heart is true, your heart is golden, you can trust it. What should you do? <laughs> you know, this this map that we have. Um, yeah, Amy says she's got too much to type. That's Amy. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, the Atlas and the Compass. So I love it. Atlas, top vertebra, supports the head and carries the world Gaia on his shoulders. That's so beautiful. I love that. I've never made the Atlas um, connection before, but I love that. And again, when you said, um, who was it? Elizabeth with the occiput this top part here, balancing the world there. Oh, it's beautiful. So I don't, I just want, to, I don't know how you guys are experiencing this, but it's beautiful to me to watch the themes come up and the threads come up. And then also for me to hear words I've never heard before and things explained in ways I've never explained them before, but it's the same, it's the same medicine. So what about you, Angel? Do you want to share anything before? Yes, I mean, I heard I will show you the light in you. That's what I heard, which very much resonate with the heart and the compass and the map. And, you know, it was like it was like God trying to project a light into me and, and Sudi Popra saying, I will show you the light <laughs> in you. Right. So that was, that was so, I was listening to you and I was just smiling because I could see as I was weaving with a lot of things that were written here. This is so uh, beautiful. Like giving me chills. Yeah. I just, this is, I hope the whole world experiences this tree at some point. That has been my experience with this tree. Like I was raised to think that like I'm sinful, it's dark, it's bad. It's, you know, there's nothing good in me. And all this tree has done has been like, Amanda, look at all your light. Look at all your light. Look at all your light. And part of what it's taught me, like you said, is it is the divine light illuminating me and flowing through me. But it's in no way is that diminishing that it's my light. Like I am an embodiment of the divine light, a channel, a conduit for the divine light. Um this tree has kind of taught me to like love myself <laughs> like myself because of that and it's god projecting it that's beautiful <laughs> yeah and i wanted to mention so here we are you know sitting in the catskill which is on on stolen land of the lenape people and uh the lenape people uh used to make their uh tobacco poach so to hold the most precious medicine where tobacco is very sacred in a uh, deer skin in the shape of the tulip poplar flower. So they consider that tulip poplar was the only one able to hold tobacco, which is fire medicine. Tobacco is very connected to the sun and the fire. So I also see the parallel and that connection, you know, in that flower holding that fire, right? Holding yes. that light and being able to hold the sacred. Yes. To hold, you know, what's very precious, right? Yes. The connection to the feminine and connection to the womb and connection to the heart in so many ways, even when we weave that ancient wisdom there. This uh, is so beautiful to me because you shared this story with me. Um, I don't know if it was in our last conversation or privately, but it it exploded connections in my mind. And when you told me how like they make the pouch because they say, you know, it can hold the sacred medicine. It made all these connections for me with my experience with this tree for incarnation. Like you, every single person here, every single person who's going to watch this, every single human, like it's you, like you are capable of holding the sacred medicine. You are the incarnation, the 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 human and the divine coming together this idea of embodiment you know like 
because you might look at this light and think this light is too bright for me. This is too holy. This is too divine. No, like you are the sacred vessel. You know, you, you are like incarnation is possible and it's why you're here. So now I have this little catchphrase that I like, which sometimes I'll do like hashtag Instagram stuff, like incarnate now, (laughs) you know, like (laughs) come into the body now. Um, It's so beautiful when you say like it can hold this, the sacred medicine and the Lenape people recognize that that's what we're talking about tonight is that. There is a tree here among us that they considered capable of holding the sacred tobacco, which is the ceremonial plant that people go to do dietas with. And they're like, but we've got this one that can also hold this. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. instead of tobacco holding it, even though we're not doing like hierarchy, but this idea that like, that's probably not a plant to sneeze at if they if they believe that you can make this uh, or should be making this pouch with it for these um for this medicine do you mind if i share with you what i got please before i do it i just want to stop because i always share my stuff last so does anybody else have anything they want to put in the chat before i do because i always wait Stacy says she's so grateful she's tearing up. I tell people it's always been a good class if somebody cries. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to share what I got and it goes with what we've heard together. So it's a it's lovely to have kind of this ending. It says, I love to shine through you. <laughs> You're beautiful when you shine. Glow, glow, glow. Those leaves that Lance noticed, your light connects everything, everyone. It weaves a web across the whole world, across the dragon ley lines. Magnify the light, amplify the light. The divine light shines through you. It stands behind you. There's never been a cup as full as you. The light is breaking through. The light is breaking through the cracks. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> so beautiful. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it's the tallest tree in the Northeast, right? A few people don't know that, but the Tilipopra is also the tallest, right? So it's the one that goes all the way to the light and can go above the other trees to kind of catch the light. Yeah. Um, and I've heard, I don't know if it's true, but it's not verified yet, but the Lenape people apparently use the inner bark of the tree because it is psychoactive. So that sweet inner bark has apparently some visionary properties in it. And they were, I think, using it as a tea at the time. So that tree obviously was recognized as very special, has a lot of aspect to it, but I just also wanted to mention that, uh, you know, for the people listening tonight or on the podcast. I, I wanted to say that image you gave of like the, you know, goes up to the light. Matthew Wood, who I mentioned earlier, he said that one of the first messages he got from Tulip Poplar, he was teaching a class and he put his hand out and just leaned over on Tulip Poplar. And he didn't really know much of it then, he said. And he said he suddenly had a vision of just a beam straight to the heavens, a beam of light straight to the heavens. And I've had students sit with it and use the word antenna you know, an antenna. And then the image that you just gave, um, it reminded me of another Bible image because that's one of my languages with my upbringing where um, I believe it's Jacob's ladder and he has the dream where he sees the angels going up and down from heaven to earth on this ladder. And this is to a poplar for me, like uh, with this tree, I have been able to climb up to the heavens and climb back down again. Because it is heaven and earth merging in us, heaven and earth, the incarnation merging inside of us in our golden hearts. But that image that you just gave of, you know, reaching to the heavens, to the skies, it has um, celestial angelic connections um, Mm -hmm. and this ability to go up and down, to be in that world and in this world. 
you know, and to bring what's there down to here. A lot of shamanic, you know, connections. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me a little bit of the San Pedro cactus, the Wachuma cactus, with, with, that is a very tall cactus that got his name San Peter, San Pedro, because San Peter has the key of paradise. <laughs> and it's that cactus that reached to the light, right? And that we can connect uh, that way. So somehow I see a little bit, I mean, it's from different countries and different parts of the world, but, you know, it's kind of this idea of that tree just no, reaching into paradise. Look, and it's a hard opener too. That cactus yeah. opened the heart. So it's a hard yeah. thing. And I love what you've said because more medicine keeps pouring out because you mentioned mm -hmm. St. Peter or... Um, this idea of the key of paradise, you know, he's given the keys to the kingdom. And one of the first messages to what Poplar told me was that it had keys. And I didn't know what that meant. Keys to what? And over the year, it's taught me it over the years, keys to the heart, like you said, how to open the heart, an open, vulnerable heart. And to where like, it even teaches you how to like have keys for others' hearts. And recognize when others have keys for your heart, but also keys to um, like other worlds and like aspects of our souls and like portal doors. <laughs> you know, it's just amazing, like the keys and the codes to, again, the language that I have is like the kingdom, paradise, the kingdom of God inside you and also outside of you and how to even speak and move through the world in a way where keys to open other hearts, other doors. So in that suite that you keep bringing, like, it just, it's like, Hey guys, I want to keep going. I know we can't, but. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, we're nearing to the, to the end of our time together. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, we spent almost 25 minutes, I think with the tree here. And it's just like a few people and it's so rich, right? And so I really, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I want to invite anyone that is listening to to try it, right? Try with Tulip Poplar again and build a relationship, right? This is a first contact maybe for you, first time with it, but you really deepen like you were sharing Amanda, right? It's It became part of you. And there's probably sometimes it's hard to know if it's you or the tree. And that's because you've, develop that relationship like you said like with a lover right like with someone you're really interested in to know and maybe there's another plant calling you and you know yeah. keep going to maybe go to another plant and yeah and don't <clears throat> yet trust yourself right because the message are for you and like you said like matthew was sharing with you right trust that uh and you'll be surprised to have it confirmed like you just did tonight for me 10 years later uh, that it is a message that has been given to to others. So I want to give the the last words to you, Amanda, and thank you so much uh, for joining tonight. Thank you, everyone that's joined tonight or that is listening. And yeah, I'll give you uh, the last words to to close this evening. Well, thank you, Angel, for like letting me come and share this with people because you know not everybody believes it's possible to look at a picture and have this experience. So I'm so thankful and I'm so thankful you guys connected. You're welcome to email me as you go forward with your experience with Tulip Poplar or other plants. I don't mind for you to bounce it off as you learn to trust what you hear. And then I just want to sing a song to end. And that's my end. Is that okay? Everything is okay. It's okay. your space. <laughs> yeah, it's mm -hmm. This one was given by Tulip Poplar. Child of the light, lift your face to the sun. Child of the light, greet the day, night is done. And sing your heart song, lift it up, clear. Of the light, lift your face to the sun. Blessing, everyone. Have a beautiful evening. Thank you, Amanda, again. Love it.
Yeah, much, much love to all of you. Bye-bye. You've been listening to The Sanctuary Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Remember, we're a source of talks about spirituality, personal transformation, energy healing, shamanism, and earth-based practices. For more, visit thesanctuaryheal.com. On the website, you can find out about our events, our retreats, healing offering, our spiritual blog, and you can also register for the newsletter. Again, visit thesanctuaryheal.com. Till next time, this is The Sanctuary Podcast, and Angel Deer signing off.